Hi, it's time to tell you about the books I read in June. And those are some of the physical books. And I've got another, uh, what's on to see? And another six digital ones. I read 12 in June. So I had a busy month reading because I tended to, I just used to come home, sit on the sofa and, and read. I, I, I didn't really watch any TV last month. I, I just preferred to, to get my books out and read instead. So I've had a really mixed month as regards readings. Um, I've had a couple that left me a little bit cold and a couple that really, I really, really enjoyed. I started off with Saving Missy, which was a gift and it actually surprised me because it's not a sort of book I would have picked up normally. And, and it's a story of Missy Carmichael, a 17 year old, sorry, not 17 year old, she's 75. She'd like to be 17, but she's, she's 75. Um, no, she's not, she's 79. I'll get it right soon. And she's alone, she lives alone, and she meets um, a couple of other women in the park, and it's a story of friendship. And it's a really heartwarming story. So that one, I, I did like. Then I moved on to the third part of the Patrick Ness trilogy, the Monster, uh, the Chaos Walking trilogy. And this one, yeah, really good, as were the other two. Really, I have really enjoyed this trilogy. Lots of action, characters that you enjoy, you enjoy what, listening to their stories, Todd and Viola, and this one is the battle, the battle for life, really, because you've got Mayor Prentice, you've got, um, what, I've forgotten her name, Mistress Coyle, and you've got the Spackle, and it's a story of a battle, and it is heartbreaking. You will need your tissues. The third one I read was, um, it was a debt galley book that was sent to me. And it was the new one that's coming out by John Boyne, The Echo Chamber. And this is a satire and it is hilarious. I found it really funny. It is one of my top reads for the month. And it's to do with um, a family called the Cleverleys. And George is a national treasure on TV. He's one of these characters who's been a presenter who's been around for years and years and years. And he puts out a tweet that goes viral because he didn't think it was a tweet that said anything wrong, but everybody jumped on it. And we've it's a satire about political correctness, it's a satire about being cancelled, it's a satire about everything that we have got in life at the moment and it is really funny. I really enjoyed that one. The next one I picked up, another really good read and it was At Night All Blood, Blood Is Black, the International Booker Prize winner for this year by David Diop and it is a really, really powerful book. It's the story of the Senglese warriors who the Saint, uh, fought in the F World War I for the French. And it's a story of two people, Alpha and uh, Mandabe, Mademba. And it's Alpha's um, descent into madness after the death of Mademba. And it is a really powerful book. It's gruesome, it's brutal, but it stays with you. So that's a really good one. Then... I went into poetry, The Godothen by Gillian Clark, which is a lament for the fallen. And this is a Welsh classic. It goes back to Welsh history. And it's the story of, well, it's not a story. It's taken from the the Welsh that was spoken by Aneirin in 600 AD. It was an oral, oral history and it was eventually written down. And it's lament for the 363 soldiers that lost their lives 
add the Battle of Cotraith. And each soldier is named in the laments and you've got a variety of poetry, you've got different poetic styles, all beautifully translated from the Welsh to the English by Gillian Clarke and a lovely book. It doesn't take you long to read it, but it's full of laments that you will keep going back to. It's, it's, it's one of those things you pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, because the poetry in it is lovely. Then I had another digital book from Net Galley, and that was Snow Country by Sebastian Folks. And this one did leave me disappointed because after Bird's Song, I keep wanting every other book that he writes to be as powerful and emotional as Bird's Song. And I didn't find that this one was. It's a story that starts in 1914, then we skip to 1927, then we skip to 1933. And you've got Anton, who is a young man in Vienna, trying to be a journalist. And in 1914, he meets Delphine, who is his first love. And you've got um, the passion of first love. And then his country declares war on hers. In the second part of the book, you've got... Lena, and we're now in 1927, and she's the daughter of a drunken mother who is moved to Vienna where um, she, with a young lawyer. And her life doesn't quite turn out as she thought it would be, and she goes to work in a sanatorium in the snow country, Schloss Sieblick. And that is Lena's story in part two. And then in part three, 1933, Anton is now at the sanatorium. He's a established journalist and he's gone there to write about the sanatorium. And he meets Lena. And so you've got these intermingling sort of stories of Le Anton and Lena and Delphine. And it's crossing from 1914 to 1933. The characters didn't engage me. Lena, I just did not like. And I think that was one of the reasons why the story itself didn't didn't do anything for me. I, I, I wasn't that invested in the characters. The next book was Another Net Galley by Nikki French. And that was The Unheard. And that was a really good one. It was um, the story of motherhood and the overwhelming desire of a mother to protect her child and you've got Tess who's an unmarried who's I say she's an unmarried mother she's a single mother because she's split with her partner and she's got a three-year-old Poppy and life is fine she's got this amicable relationship with her partner Poppy goes between two houses and then Poppy comes home one day from the partner's house with a drawing that really sets the warning bells ringing for Tess and she is convinced that Poppy has seen something, witnessed something, heard something, and it's this desire to find out what it is because she's worried that whatever Poppy witnessed is going to come back and it's going to put Poppy in danger. Really, really good power, really, really good thriller, that one. I enjoyed that one. The next one was also um, a digital one, and it was by Celeste Ng, Everything I Never Told You. And that had been on my bookshelf on my Kindle for a while. It was a, one of my 99Ps. And this one was, again, one of my books of the month. And it was so heartbreaking. The characters get so under your skin. And it's a story of grief because it starts off with a death. And you see this family reacting to the death. And the fact that everything is compounded because each member of the family had secrets and if they had just communicated as a family maybe everything would have been all right but because each member of the family had secrets it's everything I never told you the family just everything just went apart and it is so heartbreaking really really good that was one of my books of the month along with this one Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell 
if you remember uh, a few months ago, Maggie O'Farrell's I Am, I Am, I Am was my top book for the month. And this one is up there. It's the story of, it's based on the story of Shakespeare's son Hamnet who died as a child. But you, you don't really th notice Shakespeare in this story. It's the story of the family that are still in Stratford and what grief does to the family. And again, you need tissues. I must have got through so many tissues this month. Absolutely brilliant. Um, again, Maggie Farrell, wow. It's about the family. It's about grief. And, oh, you will love it if you have not read it. Definitely. And I think, oh, yeah, the two more to go. The other... The last but one was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Leonie Taylor, which was a young adult fantasy, which did start out really brilliantly, I thought, because we had angels, we had demons, we had Prague, we had a battle between good and evil. But then, to me, I felt it just dwindled off into a romance that didn't really float my boat. I, I was wanting something more than just... A young adult, young adult romance. I wanted more so from that book. So that one was one of my disappointments. And my final book for the month was uh, Shari Le Penner's A Stranger in the House, a thriller that didn't really thrill me. It had a good idea. The idea is that, um, that the wife disappears from home that Karen runs out of the house she has an accident and she can't remember what happened then a body's found and the police think that she had something to do with the body and I wasn't really bothered I was not really bothered I read it and there was a few twists and everything but as a thriller I wasn't frantically turning the pages to find out what happened it it left me a little bit a little bit cold so those are my 12 books of june my number one has to be that one has to be hamlet by maggie O'Farrell. my number one read of the month so i had a very mixed bag this time and i'll see what july brings so happy reading take care and bye.